Hey guys, welcome to Inroads Plays. Um, we've got a special presentation today, and uh, well, something I'd like to say, Mike, it's uh, it's beneficial to be in a ministry such as ours because sometimes we get some nice benefits. It's nice to know people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and in this case, knowing Lance Hill over at Fun Hill Games has garnered us a uh, a certain prestigious code, uh, giving us access to his game, Kings of Israel. Um, and it's actually, I mean, it's a board game that I think we've covered, well, I think you covered in a prior episode before I was even in the chair for GSP. We've, we've but, covered, we've covered the board game significantly, uh, including, and this is something I'm going to point out when we actually talk about the video game, uh, the fact that the first time I played it, I did the game a horrible disservice by not following one of the rules and saying, because I didn't follow that rule, I'm like, this game is super easy and it's like baby's first pandemic. And then, and then Lance came back and said, "You missed that rule." I then played with the rule and haven't won since. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can testify to that too. So, I mean, it, it didn't impact us as a paired game, but it still impacted me. <laughs> but uh... yeah, so so basically, the long and the short of it is, is that uh, they recently released on their site. They're still trying to get it. As far as I know, they're still trying to get it on Steam Greenlight, so we're going to make sure that we get a link that you can vote to get it on Steam Greenlight, but you can get this game from the Fun Hill Games website directly. Yep. Uh, Lance gave us the code and said, hey guys, just show this to people, and we're happy to do it because this is one of the, the few biblical slash Christian games out there that we support and we really think is doing an awesome job of things. So uh, we want to show you guys what this game looks like, and you'll you'll see it right now kind of in the background as Jeff and I are talking. We played a game earlier. Um, spoilers, I still haven't... You know how I just said that I haven't won since I discovered how to play the rules properly? Yeah, that still holds. That still holds. Yeah, we didn't win. You're, you've, and to use a pandemic phrase, you infected me with this losery. That's all I got to say. Yeah. That was my it, fault, too. It did... It, it, it got down to we only needed two more altars left at the end of the game, and all we needed to do was pull the proper resources, and all we pulled was grain and cows, and it helped us not even the not even the tiniest little bit. And so we ended up just having Israel destroyed before we were able to build enough altars, and it went badly. And and the interesting thing is is that at the beginning of the game you have the good kings, right? You start off. You know, relatively <laughs> they, they, easy. They set you up nice with, like, back-to-back -back good kings where none of the bad stuff's happening to you. Right. And as somebody who has taken pride in, you know, reading through the Old Testament and trying to, you know, it, delve into some of that history, I'm not thinking downrange far enough to realize that it's going to go bad really quick. So I'm just kind of, yeah. oh, let's just hop up to Kadesh and let's take care of that little sin cloud there. Because, you know, as you're working, you'll see on the map over here, as I'm uh, pointing out, you'll see there's, you know, all these different little sin clouds that pop up. And that's basically representing when the people are getting influenced towards doing naughty things. Mm -hmm. And so our job as prophets is to go in there and clean town. And, you know, you can do that through, you know, uh, through preaching. You can do that through setting up altars and then making sacrifices, you know, with grain or with bulls. And <laughs> it was just like, it, it just exploded. Like, I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to gather some resources and drop over here. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, four kings in. It's like going crazy. Well, there is a turn, and uh, I'm sure that, you know, like I said, we recorded the game earlier, so it's not like mm -hmm. we're watching it happen. But mm -hmm. at some point, if you if you pay attention to the background as the video is rolling, you'll see uh, – we've mentioned them before in the podcast. So sorry if this is the first time uh, – I'm going to point you back to the episodes of the podcast where we talk about the actual mechanics of the game because there's a lot going on there, and this thing could be way longer than it needs to be. That's right. It's if, not a traditional let's play either, so yeah. Yeah. So uh, the foretold events, which are basically in, in X number of turns, this bad thing will happen. Um, when you pull one of those, not only do you get the foretold event, you have to pull another sin card. Well, we pulled a foretold event and then pulled another foretold event and then had to pull another sin card. And, and Jeff, Jeff, having never played the game before, 
was like, what's going on? What's happening? Why is all this happening? <laughs> Where's all these sin clouds coming from? <laughs> um, that was, I believe that's what we call the beginning of the end right there, because it was just all downhill from that point. Because <laughs> it was like, it was just three rounds of ramifications. It was just terrible. Yeah, it was, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, you know, it, it's cool because it, it ramps up the tension. So, like, in the beginning, you're kind of like, okay, I'm getting my feet wet, trying to learn it, and probably needed to have paid attention a little bit better. But as it starts kind of going into the into the future king, you know, you're, you're going through the kings, you're going through that legacy. It's like, oh, my gosh, things are just getting so tense. It's getting so tense. <laughs> all right. So because of the fact we're not going to go into all of the, the in-depth of how to play the game, again, yeah. see you. Either their, the, the Fun, Fun Hill Games website or our previous episodes of Game Store Profits where we talk about the mechanics of the game. Uh, let's talk about how the video game that we're here showing right now. That's right. Let's, let's talk about some of the things that set the video game specifically. Um, let's, let's do – I think it's safe to say that you and I both really enjoyed this. Yeah, Definitely. Um, I'm right down to the beginning with the tutorial. I even like that. <laughs> so I do, I do want to do that, but I let let's go ahead and in the spirit of true, honest, let's get everything out there. Uh, I do have a couple little nitpicks, and they are nitpicks. Um, there, the game does work. It's really nice, and we'll talk about that in a second. One thing that I know is is that once you commit to an action. It's really not intuitive how to back out of doing that action. Yeah. Uh, so if you accidentally click, oh crap, I accidentally hit travel. If if you really don't know how to navigate, there's nothing that tells you, oh, this is how you can not do that action you accidentally clicked on. Yeah. Uh, so there is that. Uh, one thing that Jeff and I uh, kind of we're looking for obviously because we're, we were playing on opposite ends of the country is there is no online play for this game the way we had to work it out was was that basically i controlled everything so if you ever see the little arrows kind of circle on things it's because i was explaining to jeff what i was pointing to <laughs> um because one of us was playing the game for both of us and we kind of did it we screen shared over google hangouts because that's just how we had to do it yeah. so there isn't an online aspect of the game unless you do a google hangouts workaround right uh jeff was there anything that you know just nitpicky or just things that you wished you could have seen in the game um you know i mean the, the online component definitely that would be uh that'd be a big one um well actually i shouldn't even say it's a big one i mean I, i'm sure it's something that eventually would be able to to do that but um i think maybe the um well you know what i'm thinking back on it and just because i mean it is a brief experience that i had but we went through one round of the game i've been able to go through the tutorial i thought the tutorial was great but as far as no actually i don't really have anything that picky about it and i've been i've been critical about other games like uh like shadowrun with some of the things that goes on with that game um with the uh, the video game version of that but no i actually don't have anything for this okay well let, let's move on then to what we love about this game because we do there's a lot of love that we have for this um jeff you'd never played the physical copy of the board game before so this is literally the first and only experience you've had with kings of israel directly yep so what do you think about specifically about uh, the interface of the video game, but also just the game in general, if you want. Well, the game mechanics are really good. Um, I think it gives it... I, get, I like the sense of tension that it builds for balancing your resources with getting your, your profit where he needs to be. Um, because, I mean, I found myself one point where I decided to... I committed to going south one move and then realized, oh my gosh, there was like... 15 trouble spots up above then I should have headed north so I needed to have decided to do that and now I'm thinking in my head how many moves is it going to take me to get there how many you know grain offerings am I going to need to use or, or or whatever to get back up there to help that situation so I think the way it balances out how it issues out trouble you know like with the uh with the 
with the terrible cards versus the good cards. Um, you know, I think it it builds the tension really well. So I thought that was really cool. So I enjoyed that. The um, one thing actually we mentioned in that kind of off off air, we were talking about the um, uh, tutorial. I mean, I was listening to this guy talking and how I mean they they hired a really good guy to do the tutorial for you as you're walking through the game build. Um, so I was thinking, man, I'd like to hear this guy read a book to me or something like that. <laughs> He's really well, good. I I was actually really impressed with the fact that they actually did get voice acting for the tutorial. Yeah, they did they did do the voiceover. It wasn't necessary. Um, it's, I mean, the text is right there. It's not, a, but it's just a really nice way to do that. It's a nice way. Where yeah. it, it's, it's like somebody's bringing you through the game, which, especially if you've never played before, is a really nice touch. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Um, but, you know, as far as mechanics, I think the turn based system having four turns, you know, each, uh, for each of your turn, it does the, snake patterns so that you know the first one goes last last goes first that sort of thing and I, sort of I, I really also like speaking of the way they track how many turns you've got left is is that next to your little character there's this blue little bar as if it's filled with water yeah. and every time you take an action the thing will it trickles out a little bit i did it, it's a little thick I, i'm a fan of nice design yeah yeah definitely it's it's just the little touches that just it you know gives it so much more character so yeah totally into that well, the one the one thing I love, and and I, again I, I cited this earlier, um, it was really easy for me to skip the short king the short lived kings rule, um, mm-hmm. which is which is why I thought it was easy. Yeah. Now, granted, when we played specifically, uh, because we were only playing two players, the short lived kings basically get skipped. Yeah. Um, because this game realizes that with two people, it's punishing enough. You don't need to add the awful that is the short lived king. Um, but, but I love that it does that for you. Like it, it said without us saying anything, just the fact that we only had two players, it automatically said itself that those skipped. We didn't have to tell it to do that. It just said, you only have two players. This, we're just skipping this. Right. Likewise. But that, and that speaks to the idea that they play tested this, that they know the game. yeah. Yeah. And likewise, if you have more, because I've I've done solo player games where I've done all four profits, and uh, it does it takes care of all of it for you. It says yes, this is a short lived king. Here's your sin card. Now we move on. Like it does all of that for you, and it even uh, I you you they do have the variant where you can put in the false prophet, and the false prophet's all taken care of as well. So rather than having to worry about what's he doing, and because there it's all uh. It's all programmed action, so when you're playing the board game version, it's really easy to figure out. But this, it just does it for you. It's like he moves here, he puts the sin thing here, done. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to, whether you've played the game before or not, this just takes care of all of the rule stuff without having to stress about it. Yeah, totally agreed. And it, and it helps you, it like, and all of that just builds toward being able to get into the game quickly. You know, like I, I went through the tutorial once as earlier in the day before our recording, and then we got on air and we were hitting the board in like 10 minutes. I mean, we were, we were playing. Um, yeah. And it keeps it intuitive enough. And obviously it helps with, you know, you being there and having played the game, but it's intuitive enough that you can pick this up and, and run with it. Um, it's not to say that the game's easy. It just, it's, it's, it's got a short learning curve, which is good. Yeah. No, the game is not easy. Uh, <laughs> which we found out for i yeah i it, it kicked our butt and it it does what a good co-op does in the fact that it's fair mm-hmm. like we were within spinning distance of winning if we had just gotten the right cards we mm-hmm. we'd have won or if we, so it, we, we could have squeezed some more kings in there some yeah out. just just a couple more kings and yeah. we would have been fine but uh it it, it was fair, but it was really hard, and it could have gone way different depending on what cards got dealt when. So I, I always like a game like that where where you go, oh, because you, you almost get that feeling of oh, we're doing this again because next time we're totally doing this right. Yeah. Because one of the one of the alternate rules for two players, which I've never played the the physical board game two player, mm-hmm. but one of the uh, other things is is that with a two player rule. 
the game automatically set up where you actually get an, an added blessing card if you've done a sacrifice. Right. That's, so that's I was I was sitting there going, "Crap, man, we need to do more sacrifices because we need more be- we need more nice cards." <laughs> Just a sweat. We got to somehow we've got to turn this thing around. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it it's a really really solid implementation. If yeah. if you're considering um getting kings of israel but either you don't know about when you're going to get people together to play the board game version uh, i will say like i said i played this uh it had four profits i just added four profits onto the thing and i played all four of them it you it can be played solo right. in on the digital format uh it, it's it's a really really nice implementation of this game you know i actually I was kind of thinking that you know, in a in a church game night setting, you know, a game like this, if you have the audio visual chops to put it onto an overhead, right? You can have a group of people there to take turns playing the game, you know, and you, it's part of a game night. And one of the things we didn't play with our playthrough, but there actually is a version uh, where instead of just hitting the little play button, you do study, and it'll ask you like. I don't want to call it trivia because it's talking about biblical history. So it's not trivia, but it does like before a turn, it'll ask like hardcore Bible questions. So if you wanted to do something where, you know, just for funsies, you're sitting there with your youth group kids or, you know, a small group or whatever. And you're like, Oh, let's play. And it gives it that added benefit of, of having that teach teachable moment there. Yeah. Um, it's not an everyday kind of thing. Like it can be really annoying when you're just like, I just want to take my turn. And why am I answering this silly little question? <laughs> but if, if that's what you're looking for, it does it really well. It's not intrusive or anything. It doesn't completely rip you out of the game, but it just has that. It just, it's just a little pop-up that appears that, Hey, do you know the answer to this one? Like it, it works really well. Yeah. Hey, you know what? And it's, it's always great to find a game like this that we can chalk up as it's not and I'll, I'll go out on a limb on this one and say it's not a christian game where we're trying to pretend to be something else it's it's a it's a it's a game about the old testament and it's done in a great format and it has good strategy now you know it builds off of all, a lot of predecessors obviously i think we've mentioned pandemic before but um it it does what it's supposed to do which is to be a fun game um built on a particular topic and marketable to anybody you know it's that's why i really like it too that's a great great thing all right guys i think we're going to wrap it up there uh i think mostly we're going to wrap it up there because i don't want to get to the point in the video where you actually see the the defeat screen it might oh. be getting fast forwarded to the end where everything's in No, why why we gotta do that? Why we gotta show no, that no, no, no. Okay. screen? Cut, cut, cut. Right. Yeah. No problem. Um, but uh <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to revel in our own defeat. No. But we, we will we will wrap there and uh guys we'll put links to the fun again game or fun again. Uh to Fun Hill Games. Uh we'll we'll put the link to Fun Hill Games so that you guys can check out uh, this game and get a copy if you want. We'll put, try to put a link to where you can vote uh, for the Steam Greenlight to get it on Steam yep. uh, and make sure that that happens. Uh, I know I've already voted for it. And uh, yeah, definitely check this guys check, check this out. Whether you get this version or the, the board game version, it's going to be the same. It's really a great really a great game and this digital version is a really good implementation of it yeah all right guys well thanks a lot for stopping in and uh we'll chat with you soon we'll have some more of these types of videos coming out uh in 2016 so look for more